I got invited to do a guest race in Denmark on a track that I have never been at before. Racing drivers who have years of experience at this very difficult and physically demanding track. Will we be able to do well or will we crack under the pressure? Well, time to find out. Hey guys, what's up Redactions here and welcome back to this brand new video. Today it is Thursday the 24th of August and you've already read the title. We're going back to Denmark. And also that means unfortunately that we cannot take Brutus with us our dog. Hey man! So yeah, we'll be leaving in a couple of minutes and then uh, time for a 10 hour trip. We have arrived, yeah, almost uh, nine hours later we have finally arrived uh, and this time we are at the headquarters of Open Mind Racing and uh, not Open Mind Car Team because actually this year they split up. Uh, we now have a car team and a karting team and uh, right now we are looking at the race cars. Well guys, we had some nice food. Uh, got reintroduced to Denmark by this lovely family here. Hello Martin. Hello. Yeah, we're going to do some sim racing now and uh, I'm actually quite tired, so I don't know how long I'll be able to do this. But yeah, we'll just try. Oh. Perfect, just when I was filming. Just for the record guys, I do not, I do not know the track. He's lying. I'm not <laughs> lying. <laughs> That's my excuse out of the way already. Oh no. Look at the footwork. <laughs> nice apex. What's an Apex? It's something you buy in Walmart. Nope. My thumb almost went there. I felt it. Yeah, that's, en that's enough, I think. So after some fun on the sim and some messing around, uh, yeah, time uh, to catch some Z's. Big thank you to Jens, Eva and Martin for letting us sleep here. And uh, tomorrow, first time at a new track in Copenhagen. So I'm just going to catch some Z's now and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye. Well, good morning everyone. It is now Friday and that means that it is time for free practice. So yeah, just woke up uh, about an hour ago, had breakfast and uh, all ready to go. So yeah, let's pack the bags and go to the track. See you in bye. the video again. Bye bye. All right guys, we have arrived at the track. We have arrived in our own tent, which is borrowed from RSC at the moment. So yeah, this is where we are. Haven't seen the track yet. Well, it's over there, but we'll have a look in a few minutes. This is William's car, do you remember him from last year? He's now in DD2. And here's our car to have the mounted seat, which is over there. But uh, yeah, looking fresh so far. So I haven't actually seen the track yet, so let's go there now. Let's have a little bit of a look. All right, the track actually looks really short, but quite fun. I've heard it's quite bumpy and quite grippy, so that will be a challenge. And someone's mowing the lawn, so I don't have to do it. So I can just stay on the track. <laughs> All right, the car's all ready to go. And uh, yeah, we're going out in about uh, 10 minutes now. Let's see uh, what this track is like. I'll uh, be rocking the helmet camera for this one. Hello and welcome to Copenhagen's Go Kart Bain, aka Copenhagen's Go Kart Track in Copenhagen, Denmark. We have once again been invited to race in the Danish Rotax Max Challenge by our sponsor K Racing, this time at an old school track which is absolutely nuts. We start off the lap with a very short run into turn 1, flat out to the right onto the longest straight of the track. Heartbreaking into turn 2, the best overtaking spot of the track followed by the second best overtaking spot of the track, turn 3. This track is just corner after corner which makes overtaking and staying focused difficult. We exit the middle sector with a 90 degree right hander into a right left chicane which brings us back on the main straight to start another lap of this classic, tight and extremely tough track. The amount of energy it took to do laps at this track was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. This track had all three things that make a track hard on your body. No time to rest, very high grip and a lot of bumps. The track might not seem that bumpy on camera but let me show you the onboards of a camera with no stabilization. 
Also, the fact that the middle sector of this track is just non-stop corners takes an extra big toll on your body. The rapid changing of directions and the rapid change of g-forces, which is amplified by the bumpy surface of this track, makes Copenhagen an extremely wild and difficult ride. Anyways, as you might have expected, I wasn't immediately on the pace. When learning a new track, the fastest way to do this is to just follow around some drivers who already know their way around the track, which is what I did here. The pit lane situation here in Copenhagen is a bit odd, to say the least. If you want to check your tire pressures during the session, you need to pull up into this little mini pit lane here in the middle of the track. There's barely enough room for everyone though, and getting out is a tight squeeze. Then when the session is over, you enter this part and then continue on into the actual pit lane. We then start our second session, but that one was unfortunately cut short by this. Well, that certainly is an interesting track. Yeah, it's super physical, um, really tough on your shoulders, on your back, on your arms, and uh, a little bit on your neck as well. But it is actually quite fun to drive, so that's cool. But yeah, you saw there, uh, yeah, we got some uh, issues with the engine. Uh, it's uh, misfiring all the time. Also in the session uh, in which we uh, didn't have the onboard camera, it was also misfiring, but now it was so severe that I had to come in. So yeah, the guys are actually changing it right now. So uh, yeah, I hope it uh, stays away now. We're going to change the wiring harness. You can see just all the cables getting taken off and it will be replaced by this. So I hope that resolves the issue. Now before we start the next session, you might be wondering, Red, you are Dutch. Why the f*** are you in Denmark? Well, that is because the sponsor of this video, kracingshop.com. Kracing is a karting webshop selling engine and chassis parts, as well as stuff like lubricants, racing gloves and helmets. Right now there's a huge 25% sale on all kinds of products on the webshop if you use the code RED25 on checkout. So you just fill up your basket, apply the code RED25 and boom, 25% discount. So if you're in need of some karting products, give K Racing a visit. You'll not only save money, but you'll also be supporting me. There was one thing however that wasn't really supporting me in this session and that was once again the engine. <laughs> Well guys, we changed some things on the cart. Uh, I felt like I had too much grip at the front, so we changed uh, to the uh, uh, zero degree caster ring here, which this should give less grip. And tomorrow we're also going to put in uh, less grip at the back by uh, putting in a shorter axle. But it's actually maybe raining tomorrow. At least I think our base is good. We're still yeah, missing some tents at least. Uh, but the gap isn't as big as I feared. And uh, yeah, we didn't really have that much track time. So I think we're doing okay. And here we have Benjamin. Samuel. This is the gang for the weekend. Do something, do something. Yeah, gang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. All right, guys, done for today. Uh, fix the car for tomorrow, put new tires on. And uh, yeah, time to uh, find some place to eat now because we don't actually know where we can eat. We found a place to eat and I don't know where it is, but it looks extremely cool here. And uh, now I have to follow these guys because I don't know where we're going. <laughs> Food was nice, city was nice, uh, quite busy actually we were in there for way too long. But you know we're actually staying over at Charles Place, the uh, owner of K Racing as you guys know. And yeah, I think it was a pretty good day, of course we had some issues, uh, Yeah, I did a lot of work on the spanner so I'm really tired. And let's hope uh, it's just a little bit better tomorrow, it's actually raining right now, so the track might be wet when we get there tomorrow, I don't know. But we have three more sessions, uh, we are going to use the Danish engine, uh, I'm not allowed to use my own one unfortunately. And uh, yeah, let's just hope it uh, runs better tomorrow. Anyways, I'm going to catch some sleep and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. Good morning guys and welcome back to the track. Like I said yesterday, it was scheduled to be raining and um, we have got a wet track. But it's actually going to stay dry now for the rest of the day, probably. So this is the only wet track we'll get today. 
So we'll have to look and see what kind of axle we will put in and what we'll do with setup. Uh, yeah, we just have to wait and see uh, how the uh, weather will develop. Also, we have uh, scrutineering in about an hour, so we have to be ready for that as well. But like this, it's definitely uh, wet. So, scrutineering is done. There was a little bit of a problem with our race number. That was not correct, but it should be all okay. But we're going to fix it, aren't we, Samuel? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last practice sessions of the weekend before we head into qualify. We have a freshly rebuilt engine, so a lot of parts got replaced, so it should be good. We also made some major setup changes to counter the insane amount of grip that this track has. We removed some grip from both the front and the rear of the cart, and it was working very well. I felt like the cart still had more than enough grip whilst not having too much. Having a lot of grip might sound good, but in reality it will absolutely kill your apex and exit speeds. So I feel like in some parts of the track we were really strong. But in one particular area we were struggling, and that is acceleration out of slow corners. That's something that can be easily solved with gear ratio, but keep in mind if you gear the cart more towards acceleration you will of course lose top speed. With a new day of testing, also comes a new pit lane here in Copenhagen. This time however, I had a nasty surprise when coming in for my pressures. Luckily no one was hurt, but that could have ended much worse. We continued on with adjusted tire pressures and the pace was looking okay. We were about 6 tenths short on P1, just outside the top 10. I think we can improve some more going into the races, especially in the fast corners where I continuously suffer from oversteer. Let's just see what we can do. Alright, practice is officially over. Uh, I think we have a decent pace. Uh, we got P13 in that last one. Uh, yeah, I'm losing quite a bit in the fast sections, uh, but I also feel like I'm not getting enough exit speed. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, after this we have qualifying and then two heats. But uh, first now we have the uh, driver's briefing, so let's go to that first. And what's also a thing I probably won't understand a word because it's in Danish. Nice. I can't understand shit. Yeah, well, crap. Uh, same issue as we had yesterday in qualifying, so no time set. That means we're starting last at a track that's very difficult to overtake at. But we'll just see how it goes. For now, we put on my own engine, so it should be good to go. Yeah, it's all ready for the race. Got my own engine on there. Should be all good to go. So let's see what we can make of it. Let's fucking go. So with so much crap happening in practice, uh, the, the engine failure, the uh, almost crash in the pit lane, I do actually feel like we have uh, at least a little bit of pace. The cart felt okay, the cart felt quick. We now have our own engine on there, which may or may not have been illegal. Five red lights and away we go. You can see that we immediately pull towards the inside, try to have a look there. We have a big crash. Luckily we are on the inside and we avoid it and we gain uh, yeah, about five plays by that already. Then these number 64 there uh, defends very aggressively. Uh, there you can see some more uh, ding dong battling going on. We push the 64 ahead, we gain one place, we go around the outside of the blue cart. We're now up into P17, so we gained eight places in... Uh, 150 meters, maybe 200 meters. So again, we have a rocket start this year, which is, like I say in every video, starts really have not been the issue this year. Let's see if we can continue this upward spiral uh, through the rest of this uh, very short circuit uh, in this 18 lap race, which is only eight minutes. The, uh, of course, because it's uh, heat, uh, it's only a very short race. If you're a little bit unfamiliar with the heat, um, karting works like this. You have a pre-final and a final. Those two races are the only two races that count. And in order to 
determine the starting position for that race we have heats and the average of that position will be uh, your starting position for the final anyway so you can see that we go for a nice little dive from up the inside of the uh, 64 an absolutely beautiful move if i do say so myself we came from uh, quite far back and i think this shows that we definitely did have the pace and there you can see the rsc guy Heading over the back there of the number 21, which makes us get another position. Now the 21 is vulnerable as well. I know that we are a little bit quicker than him. And in lap 5, you can see here, we are in the slipstream. Our own engine uh, runs like an absolute rocket. We go up the inside there, B14. Like I said, the pace was actually not that bad. And the fact that we now have an engine without issues only shows that we now have the pace to... At least move forward a little bit. I'm not saying that we have the pace to win it. Of course, we are back all the way back in B14. If we would have the pace to win it, we would have been a lot further up the grid already. Um, but yeah, skipping ahead a little bit further now into lap 12. Going into lap 13, you can see that, that we have a lot of straight line speed now. And we're now behind the number 39. Can we go up the inside here? Yes, we can. Oh, but we also get dive bombed there by the number 81, which was actually a very tight situation. He uh, dive bombed us while we were also dive bombing someone else. Uh, luckily... Uh, no lives were lost there, but we did lose uh, one position, which is unfortunate. But hey, let's see if we can uh, stick behind the uh, number 81 and uh, follow him around a bit. You can see that on exit of uh, the on exiting the final uh, or the middle sector, he was a little bit quicker than us. There you can see he already going for the move up the uh, inside of the number 39. But now he is vulnerable, and we try it once again up the inside of the turn 2, and now we actually do make it stick. There we uh, signal to him uh, to follow me and... Uh, try to move forward as much as possible because in karting if you just end up battling you lose so much time and if you work together a little bit a little bit smart about uh, what you do you can actually gain a lot of time but unfortunately the gap was a little bit too big for us to close and uh, we are going to finish this race in p14 which in my opinion isn't that bad uh, yeah like i said uh, we definitely do have to pace a little bit yeah i think that race was not too bad as you can see that by the lap time we were only two tenths off of the uh, of the uh, fastest card which is not really that bad in my opinion we haven't been this close in terms of pace for the entire uh, weekend and actually as you can see p2 also did a 28.2 so i feel like we really had some decent pace we had an engine that worked this time the card was good let's just see if we can carry this momentum into the next race guys welcome back this time we are uh, ready for heat 2 like i said in the previous race uh, the heats determine your starting position for the pre-final and the final and the pre-final and the final are the only races that really count towards the event result anyways let's switch our focus back to this heat now five red lights and away we go and again we get a rocket ship start we can immediately send it up the inside of the number 32 there who is also our teammate and by doing that we also uh, overtook the guy on the outside here we decide to go around the outside as well but unfortunately there's a big crash ahead of us in which we have to break uh, massively which makes us lose a lot of momentum which makes us basically lose all of the positions again that we fought for at the start so we're now back in p21 sometimes just with the start you just don't know what's happened uh, what will happen i try to go around the outside sometimes it works out this time it definitely didn't like i said you can't win them all our starts have been really good this year uh, but unfortunately not this time anyways the number 41 there is looking to go up the inside of the number 10 he does so uh, into turn two and we uh, join him uh, in his move there and uh, that's another free position for us we're now up into p20 one thing, however, about this race uh, was that it was actually a little bit cooler than the previous race in terms of temperature. And I uh, gambled on it to stay the same temperature, so I went a little bit lower on tire pressure. Uh, and that actually turned out to be a massive mistake. Uh, here we go up the inside of the uh, number 32, our teammate. We re-overtake him after he re-overtook us at the start crash. Uh, and you saw that there was a different card right behind us. Uh, but as I was saying before, uh, there's just so much action, I can't keep up with it. Uh, yeah, we gambled to uh, go a little bit lower on tire pressure because it was a little bit too high in the previous race. Uh, but what actually happened was that it got colder so not only uh, were the tire uh, temperatures cooler because we had less pressure but also because the temperature of the air was just lower and that means that we had a little bit less grip uh, and that we were suffering a little bit more in this race anyways we now uh, skip to lap five and uh, you can see that, that we can now get overtaken by the uh, number 19 driver so yeah you can clearly see that our pace was not as strong as it was in the previous heat uh, i think we were about two tenths slower than the previous heat so we're now listening about four tenths to the fastest guy uh, which at a track this short is quite a lot um, of course when there's a longer track um, if you're a little bit more of the pace it's less of the percentage of the actual lap time but here three tenths is a lot more than let's say at gank 
Anyways, we skip ahead uh, to lap 11. You can see there that now we are now behind the uh, number 15, who's wearing an MS car too, but he's actually on OTK, if uh, I see that correctly. Anyways, we've been behind him for quite a long time, so we decided to give him a little bit of a push, move him out of the way, uh, and boom. And it might seem a little bit dirty, but sometimes in karting, a little push uh, to get through the field faster, it's not uncommon. I'm not saying it's correct, but it's not uncommon. We decided to take a little bit of an aggressive move there. And because we did that, we are now uh, right behind the number 19 and the driver ahead. And they're actually having a ding-dong battle. The number 19 there goes ahead uh, goes ahead of the number three, uh, 31. And uh, I noticed that the number 31 card was a little bit slower. We are definitely stronger than him. You can see that we are inching a little bit closer every single corner. And the last lap is coming. Maybe we can go for a cheeky move up the inside uh, on the last lap, which uh, starts now. We are in the slipstream. The gap right now is definitely too far. We cannot go for a dive from there. But we are a lot stronger on the brakes. You can see here that we gain a lot of time also on exit. We are now right up his bumper. Maybe we can go for a move here into turn 3. Yes we can. It's a late move. We lunge it up the inside. We touch his side a little bit. And now there's pretty much no chance for him to re-overtake us again. Because this is all just cornered from here on out. And like I said, this track is super hard to overtake at. So we keep P uh, P17 and come across the line to finish the second heat in P17. And like I said also during this heat uh, we were a little bit more of the pace we uh, yeah now we're about four tenths of the pace which is a little bit more than last time. One thing however is that we were still running our uh, Dutch engine which was actually illegal to run uh, and a lot of people started to notice so after this we had to switch to a different engine and I actually got a brand new engine from the box so a brand new Rotex engine straight from the box put on my cart and let's just hope that doesn't have any problems. It shouldn't have but let's hope so. All right, so yeah, heats are finished, uh, day is over, now time to have some food. I think the speed was really good, especially in the first heat. In the first heat we were actually doing the same lap times as P2, so that's good. Uh, then in the second heat we went a little bit lower on tire pressure, but it actually uh, got cooler, so yeah, the car was sliding a little bit at the back end, but uh, yeah, I think the speed is really good actually. Yeah, P14 in the first heat, P17 in the uh, second heat. Uh, yeah, tomorrow there's two more heats, then pre-final, then final. We got one new tire that we can use, uh, um, I don't know uh, if we're going to put it on in the pre-final or the final, but we'll see about that. Now, let's uh, have some food. <laughs> so, the car is all done for tomorrow. New engine on there, brand new, straight from the box. And that is why I am now in bed and I'm going to sleep, because tomorrow it's time for the last two heats, pre-final and final. So yeah, I'll go to sleep now and then uh, see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. So guys, good morning and welcome to Sunday. Had a good night of sleep last night and uh, well, it's time to uh, complete this final day. Let's hope uh, we can end it on a high. And believe it or not, there's actually more rain forecast for uh, when the pre-final and the final hits. So that's going to be very interesting. Right now though, we've got sun and uh, time for a nice track walk. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I can be uh, really brief about the Sunday. Our cam box died. It's not working anymore. Uh, I'm actually having uh, it fixed right now by the cam box guy, so I hope it works again after this. If you don't know what the cam box is, that's the helmet cam that we use to uh, record the races. But uh, yeah, um, the engine issues returned somehow. And yeah, you can tell that by the fact that we finished P21 in uh, the third heat. Even though our pace wasn't that bad, I just didn't really quite have the you know, extra oomph that we had with our own engine to move through the field smoothly. And the stewards also decided to give me a black flag because they thought I uh, caused a start crash. In my opinion, I really didn't. I didn't even touch the guy, but uh, hey, it's their decision. So uh, yeah, I just have to deal with it. Then unfortunately, in the pre-final, our engine issues got so bad that we had to retire after seven laps. So yeah, this weekend is not really looking good so far. Two semi-okay heats, but then a black flag and a DNF. That means that we had to start last in the final. And as you can see in the following clip, I was slowly losing my mind. Not a DNF. I'm losing my mind. I changed the carburetor. I hope it's good now. So this is my own carburetor. I hope it stays good now. <laughs> Luckily though, in the final we managed to recover to P15 starting last. I'm actually kind of happy with that because yeah, the engine issues were still present and we somehow managed to nurse that all the way up to P15, so that's cool. But uh, yeah, it feels a little bit strange for me to just talk about the race and not be able to show it to you guys. But yeah, my camera decided to die in this weekend, so yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot do anything more than this. 
so uh, yeah, that was our race weekend in Copenhagen. I had an absolutely wonderful time. Yeah, I just absolutely love racing in Denmark. The level of competition is quite high. I think it's comparable to about the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, racing here is just always very tough. The Danish drivers are really aggressive, but I really enjoy racing them. Anyways, guys, with that also comes the end to this video. Now, if you enjoyed that, then please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You know, you really help me when you do that. Also, I want to say a big, big thank you to Charlie from K Racing Shop. He's the guy who made everything possible. He provided the car to us. He provided the engine to us, the spare parts everything now this is actually my second time racing here in denmark last year we actually had a race at kevin magnuson's home track which is my favorite track of all time you should just check it out the video is on screen right here this video however is done and i'll see you all in the next one peace